proud to introduce our president of our student council, Herkimer, Dan Abnett. Thank you, Mr. Mahebeck. So, how many people are ticked off now? Good, I'm glad. My name's Dan Adamak, and I'm a senior at Herkimer High School, where I serve as the student council president. Before I start, I'd like to thank BOCES for put, coordinating this event, along with Dr. Chinnis for his phenomenal presentation. But most importantly, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out to support the promise of public education. Give yourselves a round of applause. I would have loved to be thanking Governor Cuomo right now for his attendance at this historic rally. However, he obviously isn't here. Apparently mingling with his government bureaucrats were more important than supporting his constituents who are fighting for their rights. Last summer, I had the opportunity to attend a language immersion program in Vermont. It was here where I truly learned that the New York State education system is extremely inequitable. Um, whenever our hometown schools would come up in conversation, I heard about how my friends were able to choose from 30 different advanced placement courses, an international baccalaureate curriculum, a 100-page course book, one of their many schools, trips abroad sponsored by their schools, a plethora of clubs, sports from football to rowing, eight foreign languages, and so on and so forth. And here I was, a mere student from Herkimer, New York, who goes to a, schools, a school that offers, in contrast, two AP courses, no honors courses, and limited extracurriculars. We're on a budget freeze right now, so teachers couldn't even order a box of chalk, let alone take a trip to a neighboring town. A question I still ask myself today is why there is such an inequity, and how this injustice is still allowed to happen. And as of a few days ago, I think I've come up with an answer. We do not matter to Albany. If our lawmakers and government administration truly cared about the future of the areas that they represented, they would be fighting tooth and nail to fairly fund our local schools. After all, wouldn't it make sense to fund the institutions that are shaping the very futures of the areas that they represent? Apparently not. Being from rural upstate New York, we are not a priority for our state government. We are a small minority of the population of New York State, Therefore, our wants and need take a back seat to those of downstate New Yorkers who, because we are not needed for electoral success. But we must change this paradigm. Although we may be small in numbers, we are huge and very strong in heart and in passion. When our community was struck by a devastating flood last summer, we did not stick around, uh, sit around hoping that someday the damages that were incurred by this flood would fix themselves. We joined together as a community and took action. Neighbor helping neighbor, arch enemy helping arch enemy. We gave up our differences and we helped each other rebuild in a time of crisis. Well, we've stumbled upon another crisis. The crisis of public education in our area is causing a more damage than any natural disaster could ever cause. It is contributing to an endless cycle of poverty in our area. It is contributing to the rise of crime in our area, but even more so, it is contributing to the degradation of our area. Local schools are no longer able to create problem solvers or critical thinkers or upstanding citizens because we don't have the resources to do so. It is time that we stand up to Albany and tell our government that we will no longer tolerate the systematic marginalization of the citizens of the Mohawk Valley. To concerned citizens, teachers, and parents alike, I implore you to contact your legislatures and our governor via telephone in order to ask that they begin fairly funding schools. And to my fellow students, I leave an even more important message. We are at a very po powerful position right now. We need to organize as a generation and demand that our schools are funded fairly. At my home school of Herkimer, my student council just passed a resolution calling upon Governor Cuomo to do just that and the Central Valley Academy in Ilion has just followed suit. I implore you to encourage your, students, your school student councils to do the same. I will also be taking initiative to hold a regional student council meeting in order to better organize for our struggle. In addition to that, I, along with many of my peers, will be starting a group called Students for Fair Funding New York. This group will be working for fair ed education funding 
for students across New York State. You can visit our website, which will be launched tonight, fairfundingny.webs.com for more information. On the Students for Fair Funding New York's website, you can additionally find resolutions and press releases that, my student, that other stu school student councils can adjust in order to pass. Additionally, you will be able to add your name to a volunteer list by clicking Get Involved at the top of the page so that we can create a network of youth and their allies to organize against unfair public education funding in New York State. Again, that website is fairfundingny.webs.com. We must tell our government that quality education is a human right, not a privilege reserved for the rich. And at that time, at this time, I want to take a video to send it to our governor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a video of myself. I'm going to say that our constituents have a short message for you, Governor Cuomo. And at that time, I'm going to turn the phone around, and I want everybody to start chanting, save our schools. So let's do a practice of it right now. Can I get everybody to stand up? All right, can I hear it? Save our schools. Save our schools. Save our schools. I don't think Governor Cuomo can hear you in Albany. Can I hear it more? Save our schools. Save our schools. All right, good. One second, let me get this. <laughs> Governor Cuomo, my name is Dan Adamak, and I have a message for you. Thank you guys so much, that's awesome. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. Hello again, uh, I just want to remind everybody if um, you could send a tweet tonight to the governor, you can talk to him directly right now. Um, You'll be joining everyone else in the state who's tweeting under this hashtag. Um, if you're not Twitter savvy, that's what this is for. Uh, your legislators' addresses are in here. Uh, there's a sample letter to the governor to get started, or you can cut it right out and um, sign it and stick it in the mail. Um, next, we're gonna have uh, Bob back up. Uh, thank you for your patience tonight, and uh, I hope, uh, hope this has um, helped. All the information you've seen, Rick's uh, presentation will be on the Herkimer Bosis website. We'll make it available to the schools um, and as well as this material. So if um, you want to give it to a friend, you can point them there and they can download it. Thanks, Dan. And, and thanks, Dan. That was awesome. That's technology for you. That's why we need to save our schools. That's, a, that's why we need to spend a lot of time, write a lot of letters to a lot of legislators to get them to make sure we have the money that we can do to, to prepare these students that we see here. Our, some of our student council members are there as well. Um, before we go, I'd like to thank once again everyone for coming out tonight.